Thank you for clicking on the Morning Swim Show for Friday, December 4th, 2009. I'm your host, Peter Bush, and we will have the results of the most recent poll question in a few minutes. We'll also give you a new question to vote on. First, our interview with the Redeemer. They call her that because she often saves the U.S. water polo team from goals. Betsy Armstrong joins us on Skype right now from Long Beach, California. Betsy, how you doing? Great, thanks. How are you guys doing? Good. Congrats on being named Swimming World's Women's Water Polo Player of the Year. Thank you. Thank you. It's a huge honor. Um, why did you choose to be a goalie in a sport where you know, they actually score on you a lot? Even with your great save percentage, I mean, you get scored on a lot in water polo. Why did you want to be the goalie? Yeah, um, I guess... My older sister was a goalkeeper, and she was pretty good, so they sort of figured maybe it would run in the family. Uh, I did play a little bit here and there in the field when I was starting to play and in high school, and I think uh, I just came more naturally as a goalkeeper. <laughs> Could you be uh, an elite, you know, attacker or other, I mean, other position? Um, you know, I've often wondered that, if I, uh, if I had stayed in the field, if I would have come this far, and... I mean, you never know. I, I, I was a talented swimmer for, you know, when I did swim, and, and I think, you know, maybe it could have happened for me, but it does take a lot more than that. So uh, I sort of like my position in the goal. I've gotten used to it, and, um, you know, I don't know how well I would fare against all the contact that the field players have to do, so. What are you, uh, what are you talking about? You're the one who gets stuff thrown at you all day long. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a different kind. I guess it's just totally a different kind of of mentality. Uh, you know, I see my teammates come out of the pool with their suits ripped off and bloody scratches all over their chest and back, and and I do have to face, you know, the ball coming straight at my head or straight at my body, but uh, I don't know, I guess you both, you, we both just build up our defenses to it, so. <laughs> what are some injuries that you have sustained in goal? Have you ever had a broken nose, or I'm sure you've walked away with a black eye or something like that? Knock on wood, I've stayed relatively injury-free. Um, you know, the most, the most I can really say... I mean, I guess this last year when I was playing in Italy, I, I chipped a tooth. Um, and that was probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Uh, you know, I've, I've gotten nailed hard several times, but um, it hasn't ever resulted in anything too serious as of yet. So, <laughs> is, it, is it still chipped? Can we see it, or is it fixed? No, now? no, no, I got it repaired, um, and it was really tiny. It was really tiny. I was probably a bit of a baby about it, because it was the first thing that's really ever happened to me. So, um, you know, I got it repaired the next couple of days while I was there, and you couldn't really notice it at all. Oh, that's um, too bad. <laughs> so it wasn't even that exciting. I got a bloody nose once during practice, but... <laughs> But that was walking out to the pool deck, so... Right. <laughs> exactly, tripping on my way to my car. Uh, well, hey, Rome was obviously a huge deal for the U.S. women's water polo team. I mean, you won the gold medal. Uh, did something come together that, you know, just hasn't in the past, or is this just a special team right now? I mean, how do you explain you guys winning there? Um, you know, there's great energy in Rome. I think uh, a lot of us, you know, we had a lot of returners from our team that came back from the 2008 team, and all of us were really excited to sort of see how we had all, you know, we had almost a year apart from one another after the Olympics, and we had girls that went back to school, and we had girls that went to Europe to play, and I think we were all just, you know, really excited to see what the sort of start of the new quadrennial had in store for us, and, um, you know, we, we had some coaching changes, we had a few, you know, personnel changes on the team, we had a couple girls that didn't come back, but... You know, aside from that, we were really just kind of, you know, getting back into it together. And I think, like I said, there was a lot of excitement to go to Rome for the summer. It's a great place to have a tournament like Worlds. Um, the venues were just beautiful. I mean, you know, I think we're all just ready to go. How do you train on a daily basis? Uh, that depends. Um, right now, our, we're sort of in part-time training. We have a tournament coming up. Uh, the second week of December, a friendly tournament with some other countries in, in Corona Del Mar in Orange County, um, the Holiday Cup. And so right now we're preparing for that. It's not, you know, the full-time training that we had been through for the years out from the Olympics where it's, you know, when we're in that kind of training, it's two, three-hour practices, five days a week. So now it's like we've had, we've come together as a team, you know, twice a month since 
end of September, just for sort of week weekend long training clinics. So we'll go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just all weekend long, you know. Um, and outside of that, we have area training. So, you know, we get sent weight workouts and swim workouts uh, by our coaching staff. And, um, you know, to the extent that we can, we get together. And, you know, I'm a goalkeeper, so it's really important for me to get some shots as much as I can. But, um, you know, we have some girls that are playing over in Europe that are coming back for that. And, you know, some college players that will be, you know, off for break that will play with us too. So it's a little bit scattered right now. What is, um, a, what is a swim workout like for you? Uh, for me, uh, it's not quite as long as the field players. Uh, I do a bit of swimming, probably anywhere from, you know, 1,000 to 2,200 yards, um, depending on what I'm going for. I like to do a little bit of swimming just to sort of get that cardio workout in. Sometimes, you know, I do a lot of legs after that, you know, a good 40 minutes of legs, um, you know, with weighted med balls, with stretch cords, weight belts, anything, you know, just a lot of different movement you know, mimicking my movement in the cage, lots of different lunges, movements to a lunge, that kind of thing. Um, and sometimes you're just holding a heavy ball over your head for a long time. I mean, it's not always the movement. So uh, I do sort of a combination of swimming and legs. I mean, so do they I'll, ever, I don't want to sound naive, but they ever just put you in the deep end with a medicine ball and just say, hey, you know, go for five minutes or something like that? Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll have to do, you know, we'll go walking back and forth across the pool with our arm, you know, like elbows out, arms out, just say walk for 10 minutes. <laughs> walking, I mean treading, I guess. Wow. And is there anything uh, outside as a goalie, just from a goalie's perspective, um, that you can do to work, you know, on the reflexes and, and things like that? I mean, do they do dry land exercises where they're, I mean, I don't know, literally throwing stuff at you or are there hand exercises, stuff that you do to work on that hand-eye coordination? Definitely. When we're in full-time training, we do all sorts of stuff like that. Um, you know, the goalies will take a little bit of extra time after weights, and we'll do just reaction drills. You know, like, I'll have one of my teammates stand behind me. They'll throw anywhere, anything from, like, tennis balls, which will move really quick, so you have a lot quicker reaction, to just a regular water polo ball. And, you know, you do it maybe sitting on one of those physio balls to work on your balance. Or, you know, there are all sorts of different sort of balance exercises that we do as well, in addition to the reaction stuff. So even in the water, we'll do reaction drills. We'll get, like, smaller, quicker, um, almost like those four square balls, you know, and throw them at each other because they move a lot faster and just, just for the reaction and the quickness. Yeah, like a soccer player trying to juggle with a tennis ball or something that's going to you know, help their, their balance and vision. And yeah, I noticed exactly. what, you held up your left hand there. What is that tattoo on your wrist? Oh, it's a compass, <laughs> that one. A compass? Let's see yeah. it. Let, let's see it. Let's show it off on Swimming World. Oh, it's kind of hard to get it all the way turned around. There we go. Oh, that's pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah. Hey, also... Can water polo, can you guys, can the sports support pro players right now, or is it really, really difficult for you ladies? Um, it's, it does a great job supporting us to the extent that it can. Um, you know, in these sorts of amateur sports, the swimmers face the same, same issues, I'm sure. Uh, it, it gets difficult in the, in the non-Olympic years to really make a living off of just water polo, um. You know, that's why you see a lot of our girls will go to Europe and play. Like, I played in Italy last year, and you can definitely make a living over there. Um, here, we, we do still get funding, uh, and it's great that we can get that this time. Um, but a lot of us that chose to stay here, you'll see we'll have other, other jobs, sort of like part-time jobs while coaching or working, you know, retail, whatever, whatever kinds of just part-time work that you can pick up to sort of make ends meet. Isn't that such a drag? I mean, you are one of the best at your sport in the whole world, and you might have to work in the gap during Christmas just to pay the bills. I mean, it's, <laughs> it seems so unfair, but we really admire the passion that you guys put into it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a reality check, you know? I mean, it, it, it's, it's difficult at times, for sure. You, I mean, it would just be a great, it'd be great if we were like the NBA or something, you know, and could just have seasons after seasons here in, in the U.S., but... Unfortunately, we're not quite at that level yet. <laughs> well, Betsy, it was great having you on the show, and uh, best of luck next year. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, that's Betsy Armstrong joining us from Long Beach, and we will be right back with the new poll question.